Let's now create the Quartus project and program the FPGA. We go on Start, search for Quartus, we wait for it to open. Yes, these are some future projects that we are going to do, I just can't wait. Next we click on the new project wizard, here we click Next. This is very important, we change the working directory to the send folder on our desktop. Next we type project, next, next, we now browse for the Verilog.rtl file, we only select the design file, not the test bench, we now click open, then next, now we have to select our FPGA that we are going to use. If you happen to have a board that is recognized by the tool, you can select it by here. For example, I have this one. From here you can select your FPGA family. I installed only the Cyclone 5 family because I have a board with this FPGA only. Here you can write the name of your FPGA. This is the one I have, then you click next, here you don't have to change anything, next. Now we have a project overview with all our settings and now we click on finish. Now we need to wait for a few seconds for the project to start. Next we click on file here. And it will show us our RTL file. You right click over it and you click set as top level entity. This is a very important step and if you don't do this your design won't compile correctly. Now we expand the console. We here have the compilation flow and we just double click it. Depending on your PC configuration, this may take a while. Here we can see all the warnings. You shouldn't care about this. You also shouldn't care about this. And this is telling us that our Verilog RTL was synthesized but was not connected to any FPGA pins. Now we should fix this. The next warning tells us the exact same thing. At this point you should ignore this, we are going to fix this in a future tutorial. Let's now assign the pins. You click on assignments and then on the pin planner. Here you have an image with the FPGA pins, this could differ depending on your FPGA type. Next we have here the inputs and the outputs of our Verilog design. The only thing that we should change here is in this column. You should take the pin locations from your FPGA board user guide. This is how mine looks. The same is valid for the LEDs. Please enter the following values for your pins. As you are creating the assignments you are going to observe that these dots over here are getting red. After you finish you simply close it. Next you synthesize again and wait for the tool to finish. After the tool finished we click on this arrow, click on Netlist Viewer and double click RTL viewer. This will show us our empty design, it simply connects an input port with the output port. If you open the technology map viewer, you are going to see how we are using only input buffers and output buffers. 
At this point, you should have your FPGA connected with your power button turned on. Now we double click program device. Here we can see the name of our FPGA. Please pay extra attention to the next steps, as you may encounter many problems if you do them wrong. Press Auto Detect and select your FPGA. Next OK. This is asking us now if we want to do this override. We click on Yes. Now we can see the HPS processor, which is the hardware ARM processor inside the FPGA, and also the programmable logic. We select this and next click on Change File. We can see that we are on the Synth folder. We double click the output files and select project.sof. This is the file that is going to configure the FPGA with our design. After this, you click here in the Program Configure tab and next you click on Start. Congratulations! You just programmed your FPGA successfully. If you like this tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. Here you can see that this creates a project.cdf file. If you close this, you should select yes if you want to program the device again. Let's now see what happens on the FPGA. After you program the FPGA, you should be able to play like this with the board. As a challenge, please change the parameter of N to 8 or 10 or how many LEDs you have on the board, connect it with the pins, resynthesize and then program the FPGA board. Congratulations! You finished the Switches to LEDs FPGA project. If you like this tutorial and you're interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.